we're going to find the area of this shaded region. And first, I want to remind you that the area of a shaded region can be found in a couple of different ways. We can find the area of a region by integrating the function that bounds the top of that region minus the function that bounds the bottom of that region and integrating that with respect to x between the lowest x value and the largest x value in that region. However, it looks to me like there is no clearly defined top function and bottom function for this given region. If you look over here, the top function and the bottom function are both the blue function. But if you look over here, the top function is red and the bottom function is blue. So if we were going to use this integral with respect to x, to find this area, we would actually need to split this region into two pieces, find those two areas separately, and then add them together in the end. However, it might be a little bit easier to find the area of this region by integrating the right function minus the left function. That is because there is a clearly defined right function and left function for this entire region. However, you'll notice that when we look at this region this way, we split this region up into a bunch of little rectangles that are all horizontally oriented, meaning they all have a height of dy, and we're going to be integrating then with respect to y. And we're going to integrate from the lowest value of y in this region to the highest value of y in this region. So if we're integrating with respect to y, we need both of our functions in terms of y. That means x needs to be solved for. For this function over here, that has already been done. But for this function here, we need to rewrite this by adding x to both sides and subtracting y from both sides as x equals 7 minus y. Now we're ready to try this integral out. Our rightmost function on this region is given by 7 minus y. Our leftmost function in this region is given by y minus 4 squared over 4. And we have some work to do. We need to first find the limits of integration. And these limits of integration are going to be found by finding the intersections or the y values of these intersections of these two functions. There are multiple ways to do this, but ultimately we need to set these two functions equal to each other. This gives us a fairly ugly looking equation to solve for y. I'm going to FOIL this numerator. I'm then going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4. Then recognizing that this is a quadratic equation, I'm going to move everything to one side. And I'm going to factor to solve for y. That gives us that the limits of integration on this integral go from y equals negative 2 to y equals 6. Now we need to integrate, and this integral can be done in several different ways. I'm going to go term by term. The integral of 7 is 7y. The integral of y is 1 half y squared. This last piece of the integral can be done a couple of different ways. I'm going to use a u substitution. If we say u is y minus 4, then du is the same thing as dy. If we go through that u substitution process, we will end up getting u cubed over 3. 3, and since this 4 is already here, we're going to get u cubed over 12. Ultimately, that's going to give us a y minus 4 cubed over 12. And I'm sorry if that skipped a couple of steps. I'm going to try to squeeze all this in. Now we need to evaluate this. Our upper limit of integration is 6. We need to subtract. Our lower limit of integration is negative 2. Perhaps we can simplify each one of these terms a little bit. And in our final step, we will just simplify all of this to get our answer. And I am getting 64 thirds, or 21.33 repeating, square units as the area of the shaded region in this problem. Okay, I'm sure that that went pretty fast. So this will be a good problem to go back, watch again, hit pause on the video as often as you need to, make sure that all of this makes sense to you, and we will find some more areas using integrals in the next problem of the day. So I will see you there.